What's up guys and gals and welcome back to Dawn of Man. My name is Splattercat, happy to have you here today as we continue to hang up some fishies, hunt some aminals, and just try to take care of business out here. What are those? Those Megaloceros? Yeah, kill those real fast. Kill all of the things. Slay them. Some of our people don't have warm outfits is what it's saying, so we should probably make a few more of those too. Let's make some skins outfits, and we'll make some summer outfits. Yeah, just... Spend a lot of time making outfits this year. I want to make sure nobody freezes to death once the winter gets here. Looking after my people. Having a communal society, it's important that everybody's loins are properly girded. Oh, you guys didn't throw the spears before they got to the rivers. Man, you guys can be chasing those things forever now. Yeah, we're going to have a bunch of escapes. They got too far outside of our little range over there. I guess you can kill some bears. I don't know if it's a good idea, but we've never hunted them before, so it's like free research. We might as well get our free research. We got stone polishing over here for sickles and for knives. We can also go with pulse processing, or we can go with archery. Archery sounds like a good plan. Let's go with archery. That'll probably help out with our hunting situation a bit. It also makes us much more viable for defending ourselves. Range weapons are always safer to use than up close and personal weapons. At some point, I assume we're going to have to build a wall around our city. And so I'm trying to develop with that in mind. There's a bear attack? Oh, no. Oh, really? We got killed by... All right. Well, that bear's a manslayer now, so we got to kill it. Apparently, our dogs did nothing and didn't even jump in on that. I was hoping that they would, but... Guess not. Whoa! That's a tough animal right there. There's the dog. I wonder if the dog is bonded to one of the people in our colony. How much do we get from a bear? Oh, wow. Bears don't actually provide you with that much stuff. I thought that bears would be a much better payday. I guess not. We lost somebody in the scuffle, which is a downer. Well, what are you going to do? People are going to die along the way, okay? Hunting was dangerous all the way up until the age of the gun. Even into the age of the gun, hunting was dangerous. Nowadays, we've got hunting down to an art form, but... You know, up until right around rifling, hunting was pretty risky. Like, even with a musket, it was like, eh, you might not hit him, and what if the loud noise makes him angry and he decides he's just going to bum rush you, you know what I mean? Like, eh, a little risky, a little risky. And we got a storm right there. Dude, we are looking so good on food right now. Oh, my God, we're looking good on food. We are just killing it on food. I've seen other people on the forums talking about how they've been having issues keeping themselves, like, stocked up on food. Frankly, I recommend just hunt around the clock. You are a hunter-gatherer society, and relying just on gathering is not going to work. There's two halves of that equation right there, and you got to make it happen. So apparently we make leather out of tannins, but, like, so a dried skin... Where does leather making come along? Hold on. So... We have tanning, so we need that for a tannery. Did I never build the tanner? I must not have built the tanner. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah, I never made a tannery. We'll kind of put that on, like, the outskirts of town. Tanneries are kind of smelly, man. They're, they're a little smelly. I don't know if I would recommend having the tannery like in the middle of your village it probably guarantees that people are not gonna visit there's a reason that like tanners were forced to live on the outskirts of town is because it reeked uh turns out the process of rendering fat and skins back in the old days it required i think i think it required dog shit or something like that i don't remember the exact process i remember they talked about it in that what was the name of that book timeline they talked about the process of tanneries and the way that it was done and like frankly I can't remember the entire process but I do I do know that doo-doo was involved in one way or another like there was a little bit of booty butter involved in the process which made it stinky what are you guys up to right now everybody doing the things that they're supposed to be at the moment we got our stick supplies doing pretty good we've made a hundred dried skins good god man I had no idea that we had actually done that hey we made our first tannery right there so that'll take, apparently, raw skin. It'll mix it with tannins. And then we end up with, I guess, leathers, I suppose. Actual leathers, not dried skins. There it is right there. You can see the process going through. 
And it looks like new humans have joined our settlement. Good. It'll be time for expansion pretty soon. Frankly, we could probably go for the expansion right now. I'll probably continue just dropping these sort of out here. There you go. Perfect. We'll just keep making our little city bigger. Piece by piece, step by step, go by go, this place will become much more livable. And I assume that between some of these, like, I don't want to make all leathers. Like, leather is good and everything. Like, I would love to have some leather. But, that being said, we also need dried skins for a lot of things. And so, we might want to leave that alone. We've also got leather outfits queued up over here. But I think a lot of our leather is currently going... With a leather outfit, does that take... Oh, that actually takes a leather. Oh, that explains why it's not getting made. I thought it was made out of rawhide. Okay. Well, then that explains what happened in the last episode that I was talking about where I had that on my queue sitting there forever. Uh, it was that we didn't have the availability of leather. It just wasn't getting made. Now that we got raw skins and whatnot, somebody go finish off that cave bear, please. It only has like one spear left in it. We'll also probably go after baby bear over here since it's wounded. Basically, anything that wanders too near to my camp is probably going to die. Like, it's not the nicest thing to admit to, but if an animal comes around here and it's a short walk, you know what I mean? What's better than convenience? What could possibly be better than convenience of meals on wheels? Those guys are across the river right now, so I'm not hyped. What are you doing? Oh, it was a traitor. I was like, what is my one villager doing walking around out in the middle of nowhere on this side? I'm confused. I don't understand. Uh, let's chop down some more trees, too. We're going to need some more sticks and logs available for later on. So we're going to put in a harvesting zone over on this side. There we go. We'll assign a couple of people to it. Was that tannin? Oh, yeah, I'm collecting tannin from that side, too. Well, tannin harvesting is going to have to take a hit. In fact, I made, I'm made. i going to leave this as, like, my wildlife preserve over here, basically. And we're going to delete that tannin field right there. And we'll put another tannin field over here. And we're going to leave this forest alone for the duration of our playthrough. And then on this side, we're basically going to clear cut all this. Our city's going to be in this little valley right here. And we'll get some walls to go around it once we get up to, like, a higher tech level. I don't think I've unlocked iron or copper processing yet, so I don't think we have to worry about that. I've got 17 stones. I'm actually a little bit low on flint, strangely enough. I should probably track down more flint, but I don't know where any is right now. It looks like we don't actually have any in the vicinity. Oh, we got a flint mine right there. Oh, is there a flint mine near my base? Do I not have a flint mine? I got copper over here, a little bit of cooperite, or maybe some malachite. What else do we have? What is that, 10? Okay. Yeah, I think our nearest flint mine is over on this side. This entire area seems to be very, very metamorphosed. So we'll take care of it. Yep, we'll put in a little flinty zone over here. A little flinty squinty zone over there. It looks like I need more pickaxes too, so I should probably craft up some more of those goodies. Let's get four of those. We've got plenty of axes. How many spears do I have? Ten flint. We're good on flint spears, I think. Eh, we'll go ahead and craft some more. Why not? Population has reached 25. That's looking magnificent. I'll probably stop my population growth now. We've got, like, too many houses. And I want to make sure that we can keep up with food supplies. I don't want to get myself into trouble. I mean, the worst case scenario is we can throw some of our surplus population at murdering animals. Sounds like an okay plan to me. I don't even know if we're still fishing, really. It doesn't feel like we are, but... I'll have to keep an eye on our food supplies. Some of your people have no warm clothing. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, make some outfits, I guess. If anybody has space and time, go ahead and do it. It's time for us to get all Einsteinian in here. Perfect. Throw the clothing up inside of there. And somebody else should come along and just, like, collect it on their own. With the wood pile, we got ten sticks right there. We got a whole bunch of logs on that side. Looks good. 
Yeah, I wish I knew where people were assigned to for a lot of this stuff. Like, I wish that either, so what would happen is that when you assign more people to fish, you'd assign more people on all, of, on all of these, and then the people that were assigned to one would just free flow in between the others. I think that would make it a little bit simpler instead of having to micromanage each little area for, like, who's doing what. I mean, it looks like I can edit the work area, but I don't really care about that. Like, basically, I would just like it to be such that... Cave bear attack. Was he hungry? Oh, he's attacking my dog right now. That's much better than... I'm perfectly fine with my cave dog dying. Or my... I'm perfectly fine with my dog dying. Like, it sounds harsh, but I would way rather lose a dog than a human being. We have plenty of dogs. There's dogs all over the place. Everybody got a dog out here. So this guy right here... Yeah, butcher him. And then if the dog's over there too, is the dog dead? Yeah, go ahead and grab resources off the dog real quick. Eh, it's free meat. Like, it does look like we ate a pretty considerable portion of our food. Like, we ate about 25% of our food this winter, and that's the first time that's ever happened to us. So, we're going to want to be a little bit more careful about foodstuffs. Let's stay hunting. We'll stay killing. We'll stay scrapping. And hopefully it'll be all right. We got skins outfits right there. We got leather outfits right there. Another Ibex down. What is that? Like a bear right there? Yeah, go ahead and kill the bear. If they're going to randomly attack me, I want the bears to be wiped out. Just kill them all from this area so that they're no longer a threat to our peepo. I don't want to deal with their shoosh right now. I may go after a rhino pretty soon, but I haven't made up my mind about it. We've never hunted a rhino before. None of these rhinos are like wounded or anything like that. What does the trader have? The trader has straw. I don't know if straw is good. We also have flour over there. I mean, that's the cost of like, what, one axe? Or like five bones? There you go. I'll grab some of the goodies off the trader just because I'm curious about how they're going to function. I don't think that I can make... Yeah, I don't think that I can make farms yet as much as I would like to. Yeah, I'd like to make farms, but it looks like farming is probably this guy right here. We need cereal domestication. Where is cereal domestication at? I also didn't make any bows, did I? Should probably do that. Oh, really? You can't do that for a while. So, like, we know how to process this stuff, but we don't know how to grow it yet. Okay. Now, let's grab stone polishing real fast. We are going to make some bows. We'll probably actually make about nine or ten of these. I want to have lots of bows for the communal defense. I want to make sure that we're, like, protected if anything comes down the line. This person doesn't have a tool. I don't know. I've made a ton of spears. We've got biface knives. We've got axes. I feel like we have enough of the stuff that we shouldn't have to worry about it too much. Maybe the bows will increase our killing efficiency too. It's a woolly rhino right there. What's that? An auroch? A bison. Okay. Most of the wildlife appears to have migrated away from the borders of our colony. Go figure. Yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. Well, the young bison's wounded, so I guess I'll kind of put it on the list for extermination. I also got pigs right there, so let's stay on that. And more pigs right there. More pigs gather in their masses. Just like witches at Black Masses. That's honestly probably one of my favorite Black Sabbath songs ever. Like, I just love that song. Way ahead of its time. People underestimate, like, how... A, like, there's a lot of bands out there that I don't think they deserve to be as famous as they are because they're just, like, redoing the same thing that other people are doing. Black Sabbath was, like, the first band to be out there doing something sort of metallic. 
Oh, wow. We have even more people in our colony right now. I'm getting a little terrified by our population situation. We have to have pulse processing in order to get to serial domestication, so... I'm not going to stress about it too much. We'll just go ahead and grab that. And now we need... How much research did we need to move up to the Neolithic? We need serial... We need 15 knowledge. That's not bad. We can do that. 15 knowledge isn't terrible. 15 knowledge will take us a little bit of effort, but we'll get there. How's our storage looking right now? I also don't see people using bows, which is upsetting because I go out of my way to make all this rad stuff for people. And then they just don't use it, you know what I mean? Like, I make all this cool shit for my people. Like bows. Like, we spent, like, how many thousands of years getting to the point where we can throw an arrow? And then, like, nobody wants to do it, you know what I mean? Like, they're still using spears. Old way is best way, so saith Grog. Grog think old way am good way. New way am scary, am threatening. Got that one. Yeah, they're still hunting with spears. I, I don't know why they're still hunting with spears, but... They're still hunting with spears. On the plus side, at least we hunted a couple of those aurochs, so that'll be a nice little infusion of loot coming on in. Our food levels are crazy right now. Oh my god, we are just like killing it on food. That's also giving us another access to more leather, which is great. Politicians will never help me wait. They only started the war. Why should they go out to fight? They leave that role to the poor. Yeah, burn out. You got you got to put a little Fred Durst in there. Yeah. Good old Fred Durst. He was streaming on Twitch the other day. Like I saw I, it was on he was on the front page. It was like Fred Durst is streaming. I was like, "Are you for real right now?" All right. He's playing Daisy. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll see what Fred Durst is doing. There goes the rest of my afternoon. I guess all productivity has been halted. <laughs> Could definitely use some more tannin. Oh, really? Only certain trees will give you tannin. Oh, that makes sense. Wow! Let's play to learn a new thing today. Okay. Well, we may have to put another tannizer over there. There you go. A tantalizing tannizer has been placed in the corner. Down on the corner. Down on the street. Dude, did we already process all of that leather? Did one of our dogs just die? Why did I hear the sound of... Oh, no. Did she die of old age? I guess we'll eat her. Hey, man, you gotta do what you gotta do when you're living in ancient times. Alright? Although, honestly, that's not true. We have evidence that ancient societies actually buried their dogs the same way they buried humans. There's some pretty heart-wrenching inscriptions, like Romans, actually. If you go back to Roman times, Romans used to give funerals to their dogs that were every bit the competition for human beings. They used to, like, actually make marble slabs with epitaphs and, like, long poems and everything written to their dogs and whatnot. Like, as it turns out, the human bond with canines has been going on for a very, very long time. We like to think of, like, people in ancient times as not being as sentimental as we are now. I think that's something that I hear expressed a lot on, like, history subreddits and on history sites and stuff like that. People seem to think that nowadays we're a lot softer than we used to be because we, like, care about animals and stuff like that. Not the case at all. Not the case at all. When we found ancient burial plots for, like, old nomadic societies, like, that predate, you know, biblical times by thousands and thousands of years, where their dogs were buried alongside their family members, and we know they're related from the teeth and from the bone composition and whatnot, uh, the dogs were buried with the family in the same plot. You know, you'll have a family plot where they buried 10, 15 family members, and there will be 8 or 9 dogs buried there as well that clearly belong to that family because there are markers almost in between the burial areas, and each family had just like their family pets and whatnot. They buried them with the family. But there was a, there was a guy I was listening to talk about kind of dogs and humans and how we get along with one another, and he was talking about how we've changed each other's evolution entirely. Like, we actually have, so both dogs and humans, even wild ones, have a recognition for each other 
Um, it goes both ways. Like, obviously, a human being can be like, I know what a wolf is or I know what a dog is. But they recognize us, too, like, automatically. Like, they want to be around us. We've naturally bred them so that even a wild dog that runs around on the street, there's some part of it, it ended up here somehow, that is at least slightly domesticated. We've actually, there was a name for the syndrome. It's like a, it's a human genetic disorder that gives human beings kind of like an elf-like appearance. We've essentially bred that into dogs uh, because that genetic disorder is des it's denoted by friendliness, extreme friendliness and extreme trustworthiness. Uh, we've actually bred that gene into dogs. That dog, that I mean, sorry, that gene is present in canines, I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting research on it. I, as you can tell, I'm a dog person. I'm a big guy when it comes to the dogs. I love dogs. Dogs are one of my favorite things in the whole world. And so anyways... I'll probably always have a dog in- oh no. That person got jumped by like multiple bison. That's not good. Is he dead? Ah, oh, he's dead. That's okay. We can replace him. We're, we're getting enough immigrants right now to where I'm not even worried about casualties. At the beginning of the game, casualties are concerning. At this point in the game where I'm getting like five to six villagers every season, like eh. If a couple have to die in order for us to advance as a society, then a couple have to die in order for us to advance as a society. That's a risk. It's, it's a risk that I'm willing to take with their lives, all right? It's a risk that I'm willing to take with their lives. I'll probably leave our population at 48 for a little bit just to make sure that we level off. I want to, before we get any bigger, I want to have the ability to actually have fields and grow crops and stuff like that to guarantee a certain amount of food. What do you have? I don't suppose you have the next research to take me up to the next epoch, do you? I'll take your Fleur. I will take... Just the flower, actually. I'll just take the flower. It's no biggie. They should be making bread down here, too, I think. I think bread is on a permanent queue. And we have flour right there. I don't know where we process out... I don't know where we process out our grains, but I assume at some point we'll do that. Yeah, they don't seem to be using the bows either. I'm kind of wondering if they prioritize melee weapons over thrown weapons. We have a flint knife over here. Oh, nice, dude. We finally have access to flint blades. Hell yeah. Make a whole bunch of those. We need flint blades for a minute. We need loads and loads and loads of flint blades. I still have my flint gathering over here, right? Okay, uh, put that up to 25, please. I, I don't feel like we're we're stocking up enough flint for when I have like these major projects. But we finally moved up from biface knives to actual handled tools, and that's going to be a pretty good step for us as far as efficiency goes. We're sitting at 10 research right now. Five more research, and we're going to be able to move up to our next epoch, the Neolithic. Which means that we'll be able to start domesticating animals. We'll be able to do stilting, which I think is basket making? No, it's bridges. Weaving is for basket making. And then we'll also be able to make palisade walls. We've never been attacked by anything so far, so I don't really know how useful that's going to be. But we're going to get thatched roof cottages so that if Trogdor shows up and tries to burninate, at least he'll have something to aim for. That allows us to make masonry, workshops, all kinds of cool stuff, really. That gives us a bunch of options. There goes a tree right there. I suppose we could always use some more logs. It's log, it's log, it's big, it's round, it's wood. It's log, it's log, better than bad, it's good. All right, so we've got log taken care of over here. I think... We've made ten flint knives. Hell yeah, man. Next thing you know, we'll be having super cool Bear grill survival knives that cost $89.99 if you order now. I guess we cooked up all that bread, huh? We got eight loaves of bread right now. How, how fast does bread go bad? I would assume that bread rots pretty quickly. And that does indeed seem to be the case. Kill that cave lion before it grows up. That thing is a threat to me. Cave lions have this odd habit of trying to prey upon my villagers. So if I see them around, it's not that I'm a merciless soul, 
but I will kill their young with no regard for my own safety just to avoid the future attacks. Go ahead and wipe that guy out too. He's going to starve anyway, so we might as well kill him. Make use of the materiel. What is that, a bear over there? Maroc has died of old age. I don't think you can actually do anything with dead bodies. Like, there's no cemeteries or whatever. I was reading around on the game, and I'm pretty sure you can't bury bodies yet. That's not a thing that's in the game. Which actually seems kind of strange, because historically, as I said earlier, like, burying the dead has been a thing since we were apes. Um, early on in our evolution, we have evidence that our ancient ancestors that weren't even Homo sapiens yet, the ones that preceded us, and so, for example, a Neanderthal uh, Neanderthalensis and a number of those guys down that way. Uh, they used to bury their dead. And we can see this evidence with chimpanzee colonies and whatnot as well. Uh, chimpanzees and apes and primates that are here now are not burying their dead, but they do grieve. Uh, they have, like, funeral services, basically. Like, if, like, a capuchin monkey dies, the rest of the capuchin monkeys will gather around and they'll grieve and they'll make a ruckus. Uh, we also have evidence that elephants grieve. Uh, we have evidence that bison grieve. And so, anyways... Elephants will grieve, and in fact, elephants have graveyards. They go to a place to die that their ancestors have used for a long, long time. And what's interesting about elephants is elephants know their family members' bones. And so members of a pod of elephants or whatever will go back, and they've been seen, like, for example, if an elephant's mother dies, when that elephant is an adult, it will go back to the elephant graveyard, and it'll lay down with its mother's bones, and it'll kind of rub its trunk on its mother's tusks and things like that. Uh, so, they do grieve, and they do remember. It's kind of sad. I know it's a low note to put the episode on, because nobody likes to think about stuff like that. But it is interesting, and it, it's a testament to the empathy and the development of animals. You know, if it wasn't human beings that evolved, it would have been something else. There are multiple species on the planet that are incredibly intelligent, and have already started using tools and stuff like that, that we know of. That given, you know, another 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 years their brains are going to keep getting bigger. Eventually, they're going to figure it out. You know what I mean? And so, very, very, it's just us that we crossed the finish line first through some quirk of our biology. A lot of things combined to make human beings the quote-unquote winner as far as evolution is concerned on the planet we live on right now. But a big part of it was our endurance, our colonial nature, the fact that we're a colony animal. We live in large cities and groups and things like that, and we work together to achieve different tasks. Uh, aside from that, our ingenuity, you know, and learning tool use and stuff like that, that comes directly from, you know, our ape ancestors. Monkeys will use sticks and things like that to harvest ants out of ant hills. Uh, they'll use stones that they throw at things. All kinds of interesting stuff. I love anthropology. Anthropology was incredibly interesting. Oh, we've got multiple traders here right now? What? I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. All right, we have multiple traders. Well, I will trade you my bone for your, yeah, for your flour. I guess. I'll get some straw early on, too. I don't know why I would want straw, but I've got so many bones to trade that we're not going to be using anymore now that we're past that point in our tech tree that, you know, might as well. We're going to make some more bread over here. we got another cook fire on that side. It's looking good. My name is Splattercat. This is Dawn of Man. I will see you all later. Thanks for stopping on by. Hi, I do, and take care. But if you want to get the game for yourself, you can't. you got a wish list. It comes out in March. I'll see you all later. Hi, do, and uh, I guess it's time to get eaten by wolves. I don't know.